Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. We've got two dedications for you today. Uh, number one is Ian Spence, who says, WTF, I take a week's vacation, and you open an EPN store. Can we get an inflatable Blake doll, please? Our team of researchers is working on that as we speak. Uh, and we also want to offer our condolences to the family and friends of Harlan Ellison, who just passed away. Uh, long, wonderful career as a science fiction writer, and he will be sorely missed by all of his fans. Now let's get started with your rundown. After more than a decade of development hell, Master Chief is finally heading to television. Microsoft is joining forces with cable network Showtime and Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment to create a TV series based on the Halo games. Showtime has officially ordered a 10-episode first season, which is being produced by Kyle Killen, best known for producing the police procedural Awake, and the majority of episodes will be directed by Rupert Wyatt, who helmed Rise of the Planet of the Apes. No official word on where and when the show will take place or what characters it might focus on, but the press release says that, like the games, the show will dramatize the epic 26th century conflict between humanity and the alien threat known as the Covenant. Shooting is expected to begin in early 2019, which means we'll likely be seeing the show that fall. This has been a long time coming. Microsoft has been trying to get a Halo film or television adaptation off the ground for more than 10 years, but until now, they've only been able to make a pair of live-action web shows like Halo Nightfall and Halo Forward Unto Dawn. Expect the Showtime series to be much bigger. Congratulations, everybody at Microsoft and 343. I know that you've been working very hard to pull this thing off, and I know it's been uh, a, a tricky, uh, you know, a tricky ordeal. And I think part of it was uh, there was a little bit of arrogance uh, on the part of uh, Microsoft and Bungie when Halo was the big phenomenon that it was. When it initially came out, I heard stories of uh, people dressed in Master Chief costumes with uh, suitcases walking into board meetings and saying, this is going to make you guys billions of dollars. Um, and I think that Hollywood was probably a little bit standoffish and there hadn't really been that many attempts to build quality television or movie content around video games before. It's still a tricky road, as we saw with the, the latest movie Tomb Raider not really being a huge blockbuster. It, it's a leap still for audiences to sort of go, okay, well, I, I kind of know this from the video game screen. Am I going to pay attention to this as uh, you know a weekly narrative or a big movie blockbuster? It, it's still not a, a sure thing, but Halo, if it's done correctly, will make huge strides forward so that more video game content will be uh, adapted in some wonderful ways. So my fingers are crossed. I'm excited for what this means for the Halo franchise, um, you, you know, as a drama kind of enterprise, but also for the games going forward. Now, Harrison Ford is going to be an extra year older when the next Indiana Jones movie finally arrives. The fifth film in the series has been delayed. It was slated to arrive in July 2020, but Variety reports that Disney, Lucasfilm, and Steven Spielberg have decided to push it back in order to rework the script. Variety claims that it's being rewritten by solo co-writer Jonathan Kasdan, who happens to be the son of Raiders of the Lost Ark writer Lawrence Kasdan. Still no details on what the story might be about. No official announcements about the delay have been made by Disney, but Variety says the film likely won't be out until summer 2021. That means Harrison Ford will be 78 years old when the filming begins and be turning 79 when the film hits theaters. This is, uh, it's getting a bit crazy. We want this movie, at least I do. I want to see Harrison Ford assume uh, the the, uh, the role one more time, wear that fedora, kick some butt, even if he is an older guy. Um, and I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if there's going to be some kind of torch passing or some kind of, uh, you know, reflection on adventures past with Harrison Ford and we're introduced to, uh, you know, a younger Indiana Jones. I don't know what's going to happen. I am very intrigued. I don't think Spielberg wants to make a crappy movie. I think this this is what this is all about. It, it really encourages me that the Kasdans are involved now in crafting something of uh, significance. And I really want this to be great. I don't care if it comes out in 2021 as long as it's a great movie. And yes, Harrison Ford is getting older. But uh, it happens to the best of us. I cannot wait. I still love this, this guy. He was fa phenomenal in both Star Wars and Blade Runner. It would be incredible for him to follow that up with uh, an amazing turn as an older Indiana Jones. Now, Overwatch has gotten its cutest and deadliest character yet. Blizzard has finally released the 28th playable character for the hit online shooter. <laughs> 
His name is Wrecking Ball, and he's an adorable little hamster who drives a powerful mech. Blizzard first began teasing Wrecking Ball earlier this week, and many fans assumed it was a joke, but it's the real deal, and he was released on the test servers yesterday evening. In Overwatch lore, Wrecking Ball was made through scientific experiments at the same lab that created the intelligent ape character Winston, and his mech comes equipped with quad cannons, a grappling claw, and the ability to roll around like a hamster ball. Overwatch is one of the biggest games in the world right now, and Blizzard plans to keep updating it with new characters and maps for years and years to come. You see, this is the brilliance of Blizzard. They can do whatever they want, and they can make it kind of, uh, you know, fit the bill and fit the lore, and I am just so in awe of what this studio is able to do, and it's, I think it's a, you know, they've created a, a, a really big cushion for themselves with the success of the World of Warcraft games. All of their games have done very, very well, but this kind of commitment to creativity and investment into, uh, you know, the, the established games that they're building and listening to the fans and making the fans smile and happy and excited to go back to their games is what Blizzard is all about. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Overwatch ages and what kinds of new gameplay elements they're going to be building for us in the future. Presumably, if they keep going with these characters, we'll get up to that magic 100 and then a battle royale will happen in the Overwatch world. But uh, yeah, very psyched to check out uh, uh, Wrecking Ball. I think that sounds incredible. Now, speaking of DLC characters, Mario Tennis Aces is getting some new content of its own. Nintendo has announced three additional characters, the lovable monkey Diddy Kong, yes, the snouted antagonist Birdo, and the always annoying Koopa Paratroopa. They'll be available as a free update for all players this fall after the release of two already announced characters, Koopa Troopa and Blooper, who are slated to hit the court in August. Players will be able to get all of the add-on characters a little early by competing in online tournaments, Nintendo has been putting a strong emphasis on DLC with most of their big Switch games. Now this is awesome as well. Nintendo recognizes that if they want to keep these games uh, current and played and continuously sell them, because that's one of the things that's always been a big part of Nintendo titles, they have the, what's called a long tail. They'll launch them on their systems, they'll keep them as exclusives to their systems clearly, uh, and then people will pick them up for months and months and years after their release. That's why a lot of the biggest franchises for Nintendo uh, consoles have only existed one per console because they can keep selling those games. Doing things like this as uh, Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor and other titles that Ubisoft is working on and what Nintendo's been working on is going to keep these games selling to new players but also keep existing players very happy and engaged and I can't wait to play as Diddy Kong in, uh, in Mario Tennis and I just want them to make a Diddy Kong Racing. Nintendo, please make us a Diddy Kong Racing. All right, Google's quest for world domination might be taking them into the world of console gaming. The tech giant is reportedly working on their own video game console. Kotaku, citing unnamed sources within Google, claims that they're working on a console that will rely on video game streaming similar to PlayStation Now rather than physical media or traditional downloads. The technology for game streaming is quickly getting more and more practical, and it makes a lot of sense given Google's existing web technology. Kotaku also reports that Google is planning to launch their console with big exclusive games, which they'll get by forming partnerships with third-party developers or by just buying those third-party developers outright. Google certainly has the money to make that a reality. Keep in mind that no official announcements have been made and no word on when Google's console might arrive. I think this is absolutely happening. I think uh, Google is seeing that there's another way into people's lives through their video game consoles. I've thought about this a lot. Is like there, there are only so many things that we're going to have connected to our television sets in the future and one of them will be some kind of video game playing mechanism and Google doesn't want to just concede that to Sony and Microsoft, much like Microsoft didn't want to just concede that to uh, Sega and uh, Sony back in the day. And so I think they are absolutely going to enter the fray with this. They've hired Phil Harrison, who helped to launch um, Playstations, and he helped to launch Xboxes. So um, I think we're going to see something pretty soon, probably at E3 next year, from Google. Uh, and it's going to compete head-to-head -head with not PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but whatever PS5 is looking like and whatever Xbox has got up its sleeves. So very excited about that. And before we go, we just want to give a great big congratulations to all the nominees for the E3 Game Critics Awards. I'm one of those E3 Game Critics, so I've been voting on these. The winners are going to be announced on Monday, July 2nd, but some of the nominees for Best of Show include Anthem, Marvel's Spider-Man, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And for Best Original Game, Anthem, 
Days Gone, Dreams, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Skull and Bones from Ubisoft. There's a whole list of categories and a whole bunch of uh, potential winners there. Congrats to all of them. Uh, it was a phenomenal E3, and I'm looking forward to announcing the winners when we come back on Tuesday after our long weekend. That's going to do it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. We've got a new classic episode of EP for you to watch. And, of course, we have tons of other content for you to peruse. And if you do and dig it, don't forget to hit subscribe, that little bell, and if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button, too. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend, and happy Canada Day, everybody in Canada. Play forever.